Hello friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. Today we are going to talk about distillation column and its piping. We will divide this topic into two videos. So in this part one, we are going to discuss about what is column, its different types, column internals, main components of a distillation column and its basic functions or operations. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we will see what is distillation. Distillation is the process of separating the components or substances from a liquid mixture by using selective boiling and condensation. Now let's see what a distillation column is. A distillation column is an essential equipment item to do distillation of liquid mixture on the basis of the differences in component volatilities. Distillation is a physical separation process, not a chemical reaction. Distillation may result in essentially complete separation nearly pure components are obtained or it may be a partial separation that increases the concentration of selected components in the mixture. Now let's discuss about its application. The earliest known evidence of distillation comes from a terracotta distillation apparatus dating to 3000 BC in the Indus Valley civilization. Distillation was known to be used by the Babylonians of Mesopotamia. Initially, distillation is believed to have been used to make perfumes. Distillation of alcoholic beverages occurred much later. As far as industrial application is concerned, distillation is used for many commercial processes such as the production of gasoline, distilled water, xylene, alcohol, paraffin, kerosene, and many other liquids. Gas may be liquefied and separated. It is called as cryogenic distillation, for example, nitrogen, oxygen and argon are distilled from air. Now, let us discuss about types of distillation columns. There are many types of distillation columns, each designed to perform specific types of separation and each design differs in terms of complexity. First comes batch columns. In batch operation, the feed of the column is introduced batchwise. That is, the column is charged with the batch and then the distillation process is carried out. When the desired task is achieved, a next batch of feed is introduced. Next comes continuous columns. In contrast, continuous columns process a continuous feed stream. No interruptions occur unless there is a problem with the column or surrounding process units. They are capable of handling high throughputs and are the most common of the two types. We shall concentrate only on this class of columns. Continuous columns can be further classified into two types, trade column and packed columns. In trade columns, the trades are arranged one above the other and liquid flows downwards. The feed material which is to be separated into fractions is introduced at one or more points along the column between liquid and vapor phases. The liquid runs down the column, cascading from tray to tray, while vapor goes up the column, contacting the liquid at each tray. Now let us see about packed column. In a packed column, instead of having trays, the units are packed with beds of metal or ceramic rings. These rings provide a large surface area within the volume of the column for interaction between liquid and gas or vapor. On entering the column, liquid enters the distributor that routes the liquid evenly down through the packed bed of the rings. Rising vapors passing through the beds come into the contact with the descending liquid. In a manner similar to trade column operations, the liquid is partially vaporized by the heat from the vapors and vapors are condensed by the cooler liquid. Packing columns are better than tray columns as packings provide extra interfacial area for liquid vapor contact. Efficiency of separation is increased for the same column height. Packed columns are shorter than trade columns. Packed columns are called continuous contact columns while trade columns are called staged contact columns because of the manner in which vapor and liquid are contacted. Based on their functions, they are classified into fractionators, absorber, vaporization and stripper columns etc. Absorption and stripper columns Let's see about those. Many operations in petrochemical plants required the absorption of components from gas streams into lean oils or solvents. A typical flow diagram of absorption stripping system for hydrocarbon recovery from gaseous mixture is illustrated in figure. The resultant rich oil is then stripped or denuded of the absorbed materials. 
A fractionation column is a type of still. A simple still starts with mixed liquids such as alcohol and water produced by fermenting grain etc and by boiling produces a distillate in which the concentration of alcohol is many times higher than in feed. In petroleum industry, mixtures of not only two but a lot many components are dealt with. Crude oil is a typical feed for a fractionation column and from it the columns can form simultaneously several distillates such as wax distillate, gas oil, heating oil, naphtha and fuel gas. Now, Based on the nature of the feed and the distillation columns are processing, there are two types of columns. First is binary column where feed contains only two components. Next is multi-component column where feed contains more than two components. Now let's move on to the distillation column internals portion of the video. First comes trays and plates. Under this category, the first type of tray is bubble cap tray. A bubble cap tray has riser or chimney fitted over each hole and a cap that covers the riser. The cap is mounted so that there is a space between riser and cap to allow the passage of vapor. Vapor rises through the chimney and is directed downwards by the cap finally discharging through slots in the cap finally bubbling through the liquid on the tray. Next comes sieve trays. Sieve trays are simply metal perforated plates with holes in them. Vapor passes straight upward through the liquid on the plate. The arrangement, number and size of the holes are design parameters. Now comes valve trays. In valve trays, perforations are covered by liftable caps. Vapor flows lifts the cap, thus self-creating a flow area for the passage of vapor. The lifting cap directs the vapor to flow horizontally into the liquid, thus providing better mixing than is possible in sieve trays. Now let us talk about the main components of distillation columns. Distillation columns are made up of several components, each of which is used either to transfer heat energy or enhance material transfer. A schematic of a typical distillation unit with a single feed and two product streams is shown on your screen. A typical distillation contains several major components, a vertical shell where the separation of liquid components is carried out, column internals such as trays, plates and packings which are used to enhance component separations, a reboiler to provide the necessary vaporization for the distillation process, a condenser to cool and condense the vapor leaving the top of the column, a reflux drum to hold the condensed vapor from the top of the column so that liquid reflux can be recycled back to the column. Receivers are used to store the outputs from top and bottom of the column. Now let's talk about basic operations and terminology used. The liquid mixture that is to be processed is known as the feed and this is introduced usually somewhere near the middle of the column to a tray known as the feed tray. The feed tray divides the column into a top enriching or rectification section and a bottom that is stripping section. The feed flows down the column where it is collected at the bottom in the reboiler. Heat is supplied to the reboiler to generate vapor. The source of heat input can be any suitable fluid although in most chemical plants this is normally steam. In refineries the heating source may be the output stream of other columns. The vapor raised in the reboiler is reintroduced into the unit at the bottom of the column. The liquid removed from the reboiler is known as the bottoms product or simply bottoms. The vapor moves up the column and as it exits the top of the unit, it is cooled by a condenser. The condensed liquid is stored in a holding vessel known as the reflux drum. Some of this liquid is recycled back to the top of the column and this is called the reflux. The condensed liquid that is removed from the system is known as the distillate or top product. There are internal flows of vapor and liquid within the column as well as the external flows of feeds and product streams into and out of the column. Now comes liquid and vapor flows in a tray column. The image show the direction of vapor and liquid flows across a tray and across a column. Each tray has two conduits, one on each side, called downcomer. Liquid falls through the downcomers by gravity from one tray to the one below it, where on the tray 
aware on the tray and shows that there is always some liquid hold up on the tray and is designed such that the hold up is at a suitable height for example such that the bubble caps are covered by liquid being lighter vapor flows up the column and is forced to pass through the liquid via the openings on each tray the area allowed for the passage of vapor on each tray is called the active tray area so that is it guys thank you for watching this video please hit like button and share this video with your friends and colleagues comment your feedback suggestions or request a topic for an, a next video and please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification so you can also follow us on facebook and linkedin for more updates so till then bye bye take care